In this video, I'll be covering buy to let taxes for beginners. So, I'll be talking about section 24 finance costs, capital gains tax, stamp duty land tax, a bit on in inheritance tax, a bit on ATED, which is the annual tax on envelope dwellings and then I'll be talking about whether you, sh you should use a limited company or have property in your own name. One of the first things that you need to appreciate and uh, get a grasp of for buy to let taxes is section 24. Now this came into effect uh, April 2017 uh, and uh, was brought in over a period of four years uh, and in very simple terms uh, as we are today, what it means is that you cannot claim your finance costs if you have a residential property portfolio in your name or in your name and somebody else's name or as a partnership uh, or in a limited liability partnership. So you can't claim those for finance costs, but what you can do is uh, you get a 20% tax credit. So how it works, simply speaking, is if you're a basic rate taxpayer and you remain in the basic rate band, then you get to claim all your finance costs. Uh, if your rental income pushes you into the higher rate of tax, uh, then you can't claim any of your finance costs, but you get a 20% tax credit. Uh, so in a roundabout way, uh, you're only claiming half of your interest costs which basically means you're going to have to pay a lot more tax depending on how much uh, finance costs you've got in total per year uh, but uh, the higher the figure the more that you'll have to pay in terms of income tax. So that's the first thing to note and I will share with you at the end of the video how you can get around this. Secondly when you're buying property uh, here we're talking about buy to let, so we're, uh, we're talking about residential. Uh, you'll have to pay stamp duty land tax depending on the value. So where we are today, uh, there's a stamp duty land tax uh, holiday up until the end of March, 31st of March, uh, for properties up to 500,000 pounds, but you still pay the additional 3%. Uh, however, prior to that and after 31st of March, so from the 1st of April, we'll go back to the old uh, tapered uh, method, which simply is that if you're buying a property which is worth less than £125,000 and it's your first property, then no stamp duty land tax to pay. Uh, if it's your second or additional property, then you pay 3% uh, on the first £125,000 uh, and between £125,000 to £250,000, uh, you then have to pay the standard rate of, of SDLT, uh, which is 2% plus the additional 3%. Uh, and then it goes up, 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 but you keep paying the 3% on top of uh, the standard rates. So you have to bear that in mind and work work out uh, how much that's going to be because obviously you have to fund that yourself. There are things you can do with standard land tax, but that's outside the, this particular video. On top of that, when you come to sell your property, you then have to pay capital gains tax uh, and the higher rate uh, of capital gains tax uh, on residential properties is 28%. Uh, now it is likely uh, that in March uh, this year, the Chancellor may increase capital gains tax to a much higher rate of 40% or even 45%. Uh, and that's going to be make the situation even worse if you're looking to sell your properties. But you've got to bear in mind, obviously, that you'll have this tax to pay at some point. Now, sometimes the question people ask is, well, what if, if I have a property which is unencumbered, so it doesn't have a mortgage, and I want to gift it to one of my children or all of my children? You still have to pay capital gains tax, even though that you're gifting that property to your children. So if there's no mortgage uh, and there's no deemed consideration, when you transfer it, there's no stamp duty land tax. However, is still a deemed disposal for capital gains tax purposes at market value. So those are the three taxes you need to bear in mind. The fourth one is inheritance tax. Uh, so you'll have to plan for that and work out how you want to mitigate that over time. You can use trusts, you can add your children depending on their age uh, 
to your business or maybe make them part of your business uh, whether it's an LLP you can make them a, a member if it's a limited company make them a shareholder on top of that you'll have to bear in mind ATED uh, which is the envelope uh, annual tax on enveloped dwellings this is a, a return that you make every single year if your property is worth over five hundred thousand pounds and there's certain criteria that you don't meet i.e if you're renting out property uh, below commercial rates uh, or if you live in the property yourself ATED applies to you there are other rules as well but the purpose of this video is to make it simple and just highlight the different some of the different taxes so that you're aware of them now what can you do about section 24 well if you don't have any property what you could do is buy future property in a limited company now buying a limited company isn't always the right answer because if you've got no other income for example and you need cash flow then buying uh, two or three or a few properties in your own name might be a good idea because you you can use up your uh, personal allowance for tax purposes uh, and uh, it gives you uh, income uh, straight into your uh, personal hands whereas obviously if you have it in a limited company the company has to pay corporation tax then you take the money out as a salary bonus or a dividend and then you use up your personal allowance and you do two thousand pound dividend allowance uh, but then pay income tax on the additional proceeds but if you have a job somewhere and let's just assume you're on forty five thousand pounds a, a, a year then it, it would make sense for you to have uh, property in a limited company so buy all your properties in a limited company claim all the finance costs and what's left over after all of the expenditure you pay uh, corporation tax at 19 percent as the rates stand right now the rest of the funds you can then leave them in the bank account and use them to fund future pur uh, purchases or you can take those funds out and then pay uh, income tax at your uh, tax rate if you have a husband wife or a civil partner who doesn't work then again you might want to buy some of the properties in their name uh, and then give yourself a small share or again just go down the limited company route because that might work out better for you every situation is different so it's difficult for me to give you a kind of a, a blanket kind of boilerplate uh, guidance on uh, what what's going to work best for you but the point I'm making is uh, just because people are talking about limited companies it doesn't mean that uh, incorporation or having a, a limited company will be the best route for you more often than not it might be but explore all the different avenues and opportunities so now if you've got uh, properties in your own name uh, what what do you do then well either you uh, suffer uh, section 24 finance cost restrictions that's one thing second is obviously you can sell those properties but then you, are, you, you may have to pay capital gains tax depending on uh, the capital growth of those properties thirdly uh, if you have a husband wife or a civil partner who doesn't work you could transfer uh, some of the properties in their names or give them a bigger share that's something for you to consider uh, although there won't be any capital gains tax payable you, there will be stamp duty land tax consequences so you have to think about those you could transfer them into a, a limited company if you can demonstrate that you have a business which is being transferred then you can use sec section 162 incorporation relief which means uh, you won't have to pay capital gains tax uh, but you'll have to pay stamp duty land tax however if you already have a pro property partnership business that you've been running uh, for some time let's just say for this uh, the purpose of this video maybe three years four years or five years uh, and you then incorporate that particular business into a limited company uh, as the rules stand right now then you don't have to pay stamp duty land tax however if you create an artificial step i.e you have property in your name in your name and let's say your uh, spouse's name uh, and then you create an artificial step of creating a partnership and just run that for a couple of years and then incorporate with the view of incorporating from uh, day one uh, and HMRC look into your affairs I think you will have a problem because they'll say the only reason you formed a partnership was to escape paying the stamp duty land tax uh, so that's something that you need to bear in mind then of course whenever there's a change in beneficial ownership you need to look at your mortgage uh, 
uh, terms and conditions to see if there's a requirement there to report that change to your lender because if you don't that's going to purport to mortgage fraud so that in a nutshell uh, is some of the things that you need to bear in mind so you've got section 24 you've got stamp duty land tax you've got capital gains tax you've then got uh, the conundrum of which structure to use whether it in your own name joint names partnership limited liability partnership or limited company then you've got inheritance tax considerations and then you've got a ted which is the annual tech tax on envelope dwellings any question on any of those post them in the comments below happy to answer them if you like this video click like so i know that this is the type of content you want and, and press the subscribe button so that you can get updated on all the current and fresh content that i post on this channel